Hey guys, welcome to the level 2 calculus preparation questions. This is question 9 in the series. So today's question is this one right here. As usual, have a read through the question, uh, pause the video and try the question to see how far I can actually go with this question. Okay, I'm hoping you guys have had a chance to look through this question. So basically what we have is we've got a function um, and we've been told that it has a local minimum when x equals negative 1.5. And then we got to try and figure out that the turning point is a local minimum. We'll justify it anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down f of x. So f of x in this case is equal to x plus 2 times x cubed. So the first thing I want to do is I want to differentiate this. But before I differentiate it, what I need to do is I actually need to expand the brackets, expand the brackets out. So I've got f of x is equal to x times x cubed, which is going to be x to the power of 4. And then... 2x cubed so it's going to be plus 2x cubed so once I have this I can differentiate it and I'm going to get f dash of x is equal to 4x cubed plus 6x squared sorry so now I know that if it's a turning point I need to have f dash of x is equal to 0 if it's a turning point right so I'm going to put 0 is equal to f dash of x. So, But instead of f dash of x, I'm going to write 4x cubed plus 6x squared. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, well, how am I going to solve this? Just remember that x uh, is a common factor, 2 is a common factor, actually x squared is a common factor, and 2 is also a common factor. So you can actually take 2x squared out, and what you should end up with is just 2x plus 3. So Basically, at this point, what you have got is you've got either the left-hand side bracket is equal to 0 or the right-hand side bracket equals to 0. Now, when we do that, we get 2x squared is equal to 0. Now, this one is simple because we can just say x is equal to 0. Or we've got 2x plus 3 equals to 0. And when we rearrange it, we've got 2x equals minus 3 and x equals negative 3 over 2. Therefore, x is equal to negative 1.5. Now, what we've actually discovered here is we've actually got two turning points. There's a turning point at x equals to 0, and then there's a turning point when x equals to negative 1.5. Now, at this point, there are multiple ways to actually go about to prove that the turning point is actually a local, local minimum. So the first thing you can actually do is you can actually test the gradient like right next to the point. Um, what I mean by that is, uh, I'm going to see if I can actually have enough space for this. Let me try it, all right? So if you take um, 0, okay? So if I s take, for example, actually, no, I want to prove that because it actually says that it has a local minimum at one negative 1 1.5. So that means I can have a look at the gradient when x equals to negative 1.5. Well, that one I already know because that's equal to 0. I can actually find out what the gradient is when it's negative 1.4 and also when it's negative 1.6 all right because that's going to actually tell me what the gradient is and then I can decide whether it's going to be a minimum or a maximum on so on so when I do negative 1.4 uh, just give me a second I got to chuck this in the calculator but I'm going to do it here anyway so that means I've got 4 multiplied by negative 1.4 cubed plus 6 times negative 1.4 squared whatever their gradient is uh, and then I've got 4 times negative 1.6 cubed plus 6 times negative 1 point sorry 1.6 not 1.4 1.6 squared and then that's going to give me another gradient just give me a second I'm just going to work out these two answers Okay, so when k equals to negative 1.4, we've got the gradient equal to 0 0.78. And then when k equals to negative 1.6, we've got the gradient of negative 1.024. Okay? So what I want you guys to imagine is, like, basically this curve, right? It's going to look... It, negative 1.6 and then negative 1.5 and then negative 1.4 so what's happening to this curve 
is it's going to look like this at negative negative 1.6 it has a gradient of negative 1.024 so that means it's sloping down like this because the gradient is negative right there all right and then when it hits 1.5 it has a gradient of zero so that means it's a turning point and then when it as it goes towards negative 1.4 it's positive it's positive 0.78 so that means as it goes this way it becomes positive so what you're actually doing is you're comparing the two gradients so and then you're kind of proving that you know this is how it's going to be a minimum because the gradient to the left of the point is negative and the gradient to the right of the point is actually positive and that can be shown by the green and purple colors so that's one way of doing it the other way of doing it is you could actually do a double differentiation now what I mean by double differentiation is right here. See how you've got f dash of x is equal to this. So you can actually do one more step and write this as f double dash of x equals to 12x squared. Well, I'm going to run out of space. Sorry. Plus 12x. Okay. And those of you that are familiar with um, f double dash or second derivative is that if your f double dash of x is less than 0, then it's considered a maximum point. And if f double dash of x is greater than zero, then it's considered a local minimum point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take f double dash of x. So f double dash of x is equal to 12x squared plus 12x. And then when I substitute negative 1.5, I'm gonna get 12 times negative 1.5 squared plus 12 times negative 1.5. And then this is equal to now this is equal to 9 and then at this point you can say f double dash of negative 1.5 is greater than 0 therefore it is a local minimum point so that's another way of actually um, doing this problem as well so you've actually got two different methods you can potentially do it in so method one is this one here comparing the gradients between like right next to the point Method two is you actually use f double dash uh, second derivative test to actually prove that it's a local minimum or a maximum. Okay. Oh, sorry, got rid of that. Put that back there. That's basically it for this um, actually long video, guys. I do apologize about it, but it's a good question uh, and it's a good set of skills that you actually um, can pick up from this one little question here. Cool. That's basically it for this uh, video. If you have any questions, pop it in the comments below. Thank you for watching and of course don't forget to like, share and subscribe.